It's just, it's just not enough. Oh, hey. Hey, it's, uh, it's good to see you, but I'm not here on good news, okay? I'm just gonna be straight with you. We had some great times down at the lake, running through the park. You were there for me. You really, really honest to God, you were there for me. But there was just always something missing, okay? I need more fresh film X, and that's something that you can't offer me, but I have found someone that can offer me everything I need and more. So all those times that you took me for granted, how does this feel now? I found someone that can offer me everything I need. <laughs> it's time to talk about the Fresh Home More V3. The Fresh Home More V3 was a shoe that I was really skeptical about picking up, to be quite honest. I tried the 1080 V11 and just wasn't my favorite shoe. I was kind of expecting a bit more cushion, a bit more softness, and that's just not something that I got in the 1080 V11. But what I kept seeing online was that the Fresh Home More V3 was essentially the easy day shoe in the New Balance lineup, and I figured why not give it a shot? So here we are talking about the Fresh Home More V3. And I gotta say, off the jump, after about four runs in this shoe, I am not disappointed. But before we get into the specifics, let's talk about the specs. Oh, and by the way, I bought this shoe myself. No one's telling me what to say. No one's paying me. No one knows that I have this shoe. So here so we the go. More V3 comes in at 310 grams or 10.9 ounces. For in a standard size, I believe that's a size nine, which is a relatively heavy shoe, but look how much foam's on there. If it was light, they'd be doing some witchcraft. And I don't think New Balance has the power just yet for that. You get 38 millimeters of that fresh Home X foam in the heel and 34 millimeters in the forefoot for a four millimeter drop. You have a standard engineered mesh upper, nothing fancy about that at all. And same with the outsole, no fanciness going on, just a bunch of rubber. With that out of the way, how does this perform? So one thing about the upper in this shoe, guys, I have to be quite frank is it's very hot. So I've been running in very humid temperatures. It's like 30 degrees plus humidity here in Halifax, Nova Scotia lately. And it's just really making me melt. But fortunately, we seem to be over that hump. It's a little bit cooler today. And I'm really looking forward to running in this shoe in the fall time because this upper is definitely very, very warm. It's a very soft upper as well. That's one thing that I noticed is that the material that they're using is extremely soft. The eyelet chain on this thing is also kind of strange. They have elastic bands and I'm not entirely sure why that's the case, but maybe it helps with lockdown. But for me, haven't really noticed any real difference with the eyelet chain. Just seems a little strange. To they me. have a reinforced heel here and the lockdown in the heel is relatively okay, but that's one thing that I have to complain about. The lockdown in this thing wasn't great when I first got it on my foot. It took me doing a runner's knot in order to get a pretty good lockdown, but after doing the runner's knot, there's just no real trouble in terms of lockdown was this. Thing. Okay, for, and for this next thing, I have to get a little bit closer to you. The tongue, it's not gusseted. That is just a huge disappointment, but overall, maybe it would have helped with the lockdown a little bit, but I don't think that not having a gusseted tongue on this specific shoe is making that big of difference. But come on, New Balance, give me a gusseted tongue. But overall, folks, like this upper is nothing to really write home about. But there's nothing really terrible going on with it either. It's just like, a normal upper, it's doing the job. It's kind of hot, but for an easy day shoe, I'm glad that there's not a bunch of padding like we've had on previous shoes, like the Saucony Triumph line of shoes. There's no padding going on like that. Everything makes sense. It's just a little bit warm and the lockdown's not the greatest. And now let's talk about the best part the midsole. Ah, yes, the midsole of any shoe. That's exactly what we wanna hear about. And that's exactly what I'm gonna tell you about. So the Fresh Foam X that they use here is, honest to God, it is so perfect for easy day shoes, guys. So what it feels like underfoot is very, very soft, very compressive, but at the same time, at the same time, it's not so compressive that you feel like you're walking in mud and you can't get your foot up because you're running in mud. There's nothing like that. It's not like running in the Clifton or Bondi line where you kind of just sink into the shoe and you kind of stay there and have to work to get in your next stride. The Fresh Home X in this shoe feels absolutely fantastic to keep the cadence going. That's one thing I will say though, is that the Fresh Home X midsole combined with the lower drop of the shoe makes for a slow cadence, but that's exactly what I want in the easy day shoe. I was using the Nike Zoom X Invincible for my easy day and recovery runs. And the, th the issue with that is that the Zoom X midsole combined with that little bit of a higher drop makes it so that it's easy to go faster than you really want to. But the Fresh Foam X midsole in the Fresh Foam More V3 isn't like that at all. It really promotes you going slow and taking it easy, which is exactly what I want in an easy day shoe. The midsole on this thing has been absolutely fantastic for the runs that I'm doing right now. If you haven't seen the video I did a couple days ago, it's talking about how I'm struggling a little bit right now and I'm taking it easy to build back up my endurance. And this shoe right here is exactly what I need it to do. And that. another great thing about the midsole is just how wide it is, but that does make the shoe very, very big. So if you don't like a big shoe on your foot, just don't get this shoe. It feels extremely big on foot. 
but the wide landing platform in the midsole really makes it so it's stable and I really appreciate that. I'm someone that tends to over pronate just a tad and having that wider landing platform gives me the stability I need so I can run comfortably. But folks, here's the deal. The Fresh Foam More V3 is an awesome easy day and recovery shoe, but that ends there. I tried to do daily paces. I tried to do a little bit faster stuff and the More V3 just didn't have what I needed. It really wants you to go slow. It's not gonna be a great daily trainer in my opinion. You need something like the Pegasus or even the 1080 V11 if you want a New Balance shoe. Those types of shoes allow you to go a little bit faster. This shoe, when you try to pick it up, feels very awkward, but that's fine. That's what the shoe is meant to do. But when we get to the value section, it's gonna definitely hurt its value proposition indeed. So folks, if you want a midsole that really helps you get out there and go easy, or if you're a heavier runner, I think it's fantastic. But if you're someone that wants a versatile shoe, I don't think that the midsole on this thing is gonna really cut it for you. But for me, someone that has a full rotation and wanted a specific shoe for easy days, the midsole on this thing has been fantastic. And so what about the old sole? The old sole on this thing, guys, there's nothing to write home about. It does the job. It has quite a bit of rubber coverage, so I hope that it's gonna protect the Fresh Home X for quite a while. But overall, nothing to really write home about. No complaints, it's fine. Old sole is fine. You're standing on trial for your value proposition, Mr. More V3. And the issue is, like I said, guys, the issue with the value here is that it's very, very specific in its use case. You can't really go out there and do daily training runs or faster runs. This shoe is very specific for easy day and recovery day for me personally. Like, sure, everyone's different, so you could pick this up and you think that it's one of the greatest shoes ever for daily training runs. That is totally possible, we're all unique, and that's what makes life so interesting. But at 189 Canadian dollars or 165 US dollars, the value guys, it's really not there unless you want a specific easy day shoe. In that case, the value is there. Otherwise, the versatility of the shoe is just not there and it's not worth that much money in my opinion, unless, like I said, you're a heavy runner and you want something very compressive and will do the job for you, or you're someone like me that has so many shoes and wanted a very specific use case for it. So overall folks, I'm really, really enjoying the More V3 for my easy day and recovery days. I will not use it for anything other than easy and recovery. I hope I got that point across. This midsole is so nice for that. It really babies the legs and really just allows me to go out there and go slow and not really feel guilty about it. I don't feel guilty going slow in the shoe because, well, look at it. It is massive. It just wants you to go slow. So that's what I do with it. Let me know, folks. Have you tried the More V3? And if you have, let me know what your opinions are. Write down in the comment section down below. I hope you found this video entertaining or useful or something. And if you did, hit that like button. It really helps with the channel a ton. And if you haven't already, please, hit that subscribe button. I will catch you on the next one.